What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Gray Exchange. How's everybody doing out there this fine Tuesday evening? Good to see all you folks out there. All right, so before we get started, let's acknowledge some of you awesome people in chat. And I got a little bit of a surprise uh, for you folks that have decided to join me this evening as well. Uh, being that we're on the topic of yes yesterday's topic, but uh, we got a lot of stuff to go over. All right, so let me back it up. Hey, <laughs> Yarn Prepper made it home. Let me back this chat up real quick and let's say what's up to you people that have been hanging out in the chat. What's up, Nate, Ethel, Lawrence, Mama Bear J15, Harvey Black, Oki Khan. Good to see all you folks. Uh, Stewart's Prepping, JT, Beth. Uh, who else? We got Scott in here as well. Let me see. Van City Prepper. Oh, and Van City, I got your email. Um, Harvey's a complicated soul, uh, but I'm going to send you my phone number. Uh, I've talked to other folks in Canada. I think I've talked to Northern Girl and North Shore and a few other folks. So uh, you can either call me or I'll call you, but it's probably easier to explain that one. And Harvey's probably like, what's going on? <laughs> oh, man. Joyce, good to see you as well. PG Bay, PG, PJB Burke is in the house. I appreciate that from Houston, Texas. Good to see you, brother. All right. Who else do we have this evening? Coffee first and speak. Got my coffee. Got to go make a cup of coffee. Roger that. Uh, TN prepping lady. Good to see you as well. Let me see who else do we have in this chat tonight? I see Joyce in here as well. Good to see you, Joyce. Thanks for making it. All right. <laughs> Chet, what's up, Chet? Howdy. Good to see you as well, man. All right. Deba do. Hello. And I'm scrolling as fast as I can as usual. Rocka, good to see you as well. Jennifer Cruz, good to see you. Homestead Aquarius. Let me see. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Snake bites in the house. <laughs> What's up, snake bite? Little Lone Prepper, good evening. Little Alaskan Home Place, good evening. Homestead Aust traveling all the way from Australia. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Who else do we have in this crazy chat this evening? Bitter Critter, good. always good to see you, man. Van Roo. Homestead Aquarius, I don't know if I caught you there. Let me see here. PNW Prepper. One Prepper here. <laughs> Roger that. All right. Celtics in the house as well. Angels arrived. Let me see. Did I miss anybody? Barbara. Good to see you. Lily B. Lisa. Mary Beth. John. Dearman. I want to make sure I got that right. Celtic. What's up? Beth. John. Jones. Peter Rouse. Backing up just a hair bit because it skipped on me a little bit. Valerie H. Baba Ellis. Julie F. Julie, I appreciate the emails. Always some intriguing stuff that you send me. Quick knees in the house. ID prepping. Good afternoon. Colleen Rich, Mark Witcher, and Cox. Chief Prepper. Uh, I'm glad you're getting started to head home, Chief. Mama Preps uh, 4. Good to see you. Velocity, a.k.a. Sloth Mom. <laughs> Love it. Firefly, Firefly Farm. I don't know why that always gets me. Mitten Man, good to see you as well, man. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I went far up. I'm gonna go back down, see if I missed anybody down there. Cindy, good to see you. Debbie PQ, I got Lisa. I know that. Kathleen, and let me see here. Yep, it looks like I got everybody. I think. What's up, James? Might have missed you as well. I'm out of coffee until I go visit my offsite location on the <laughs> Roger. That gotta have your coffee. I'm telling you. All right, and if you haven't hit that thumbs up button, please do so. Even if you don't like the stream. It was at least appreciated of you hitting the thumbs up button, right? <laughs> Got alert for super now. Roger that. Uh, of course, tonight we're going to talk about food banks. And uh, a lot of you folks have discussed what I'm going to be planning on doing for the food banks this year. Uh, I think Rudy's doing the same thing over Alaska Prep, where we're going to try to help out some folks in need. Uh, we're going to donate pretty much. Uh, well, I, know, I, I don't know specifically what Rudy's doing, but I know what I'm doing. I'm donating all super chats and memberships, ad revenue, anything that I make off YouTube over the next few months uh, here in October. Uh, we're going to put something together and go shopping for a food bank. Uh, and we're going to try to buy high caloric density foods, beans, rice, and stuff like that. I'm trying to think of canned goods, but I'm going to touch base with these folks first and ask them, what do they really need? What is most important to them? And that's where I'm going to focus on them because that's where they're lacking. Mm. I thought, I don't know. I thought I got lost for a second. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, and of course, gas prices hit a new record. So we're going to touch on that as well. Before we get started though, I need to do a couple shout outs real fast. And, uh, let me bring these, uh, folks up on the screen. 
Uh, I know my mods do a great uh, thank you so much, home, uh, Homestead Homeboy North Carolina NC. Uh, appreciate that, brother. Appreciate the support. And uh, let's, I want to bring up, uh, I want to share my screen. So that's going to bring that down there, hopefully. But uh, so I do have a surprise for you guys this evening. No, it's not a guest, which is always nice to have a guest, but uh, something better, something better. But I want to do this first. Uh, first, I want to bring up this channel. You might be familiar with them or you might not, but here's the option to make yourself familiar with them. All right. So Auslander, I don't know how many guys know Auslander out there in Australia fighting a good fight. Uh, Auslander is at 424 subscribers right now, folks. He is trying to get to the happy medium. He's trying to get to 500. So if you guys get an opportunity, go check Auslander out uh, check his channel, check his content out. Let him know Gray sent you. And let's try to get us up to 500 subscribers. Also, who else we have in here? Because I know someone else is going for a goal as well as this one. next one. Frontier Preppers. Come on. Uh, another folks out in Alaska. Neighbors of uh, Rudy, the Alaskan Prepper. Frontiers is at 3,800 uh, 3, and change. Or did I say that right? Anyways, almost 30, a little over 31. Almost he's almost at 32, but they're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers. So if you can stop over there by Frontier Preppers and say hello to those folks as well, I would truly appreciate that. Let them know Gray sent you. We're just trying to help out some of these channels come up because so many people have helped me uh, throughout the years. And uh, so I figured I would do that favor. Uh, I know mods can drop those in the in the links down in the chat. You guys can click on those links uh, and uh, try to support those folks. You know, the more of us out there spreading the good word of preparedness. Uh, is is huge. You know what I mean? Uh, no matter how small or how large the channel is, you know, and I'll be frankly honest with you folks. Um, the, uh, you know, I watch some gardening channels, right? And, you know, we can go to the big gardening channels, you know, uh, let me, let me think of some, uh, 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 what is it? What is his name? Uh, God, Epic Gardener or Epic Gardening. Uh, he, there's also, uh, God, there's, there's, there's several large garden channels out there. What's up, Mitten Prepper? Quest Conquest? Lisa, <laughs> Auslander, you, you know how it works sometimes. The, the notifications is blah. But um, where was I? I just lost track because I'd looked at chat. Uh, where was I? I was getting ready to say something. What was I talking about? Lost my train of thought. What's up, NGH? Good to see you. Oh. See, the coffee helped. So what I was going to say is that... Uh, you know, I watch some small gardening channels, 500 subscribers, maybe less. And they have some really interesting content. They take a little bit more time because they're not pressed for ads. They're not pressed. Uh, they're, they don't care about production. They don't, they're, they're, they're just showing you the nitty gritty of what's going on. I myself struggle to try to make it, try to make the best videos I can. And my wife says, you know, just go with it. Stop, stop, you know, uh, giving yourself so many headaches. People are going to watch. Uh, and enjoy your content. Uh, if not, then they probably, you know, it is what it is. You know, you just do what you got to do and uh, have fun with it because don't make it a job because then it's not fun. And she, I said, well, you're absolutely right, wife. Uh, and the wife is usually right. <laughs> All right, folks. All right. So uh, what I want to, I guess, should I make the announcement in the beginning to make sure I keep everybody's attention? So you guys know I did the 50 gallon grow bag video yesterday. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. A lot of people have been asking questions about grow bags. Some people have been said, I can't, you know, their things are a little tight for them. So here's what I want to do. And uh, I should say this up front. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to give away five grow bags to four people. Um, the grow bag sizes are, let me give you guys the exact specifications on these grow bags here. I know I got it. Where's my little folder? There she is. All right, so this is so that you guys can see the exact dimensions of the grow bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick four winners towards the end of this live stream just to kind of keep you guys uh, watching, right? Or maybe some of you guys will dip out and then come back for the uh, – but you never know what I'm going to do, do with the giveaway. Anyways, so what I want to do is I want to give five of these – uh, five gallon, because I feel five gallons a nice way to start. You know what I mean? You can put a lot of different things in a five-gallon grow bag. So what I want to do with this – and uh, I should have made it bigger. I don't know why. I'm sitting there looking at the screen. Why does it look funny? That's why, Greg. That's why it looks funny. Anyways, so you can see the dimensions of this five-gallon five grow bag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give five away to four different people. 
Uh, so that's going to give some of you some options to experiment with grow bags. Uh, we'll do that towards the end of this uh, live stream. But I figured since I'm doing so much work with grow bags, maybe I can uh, extend the opportunity to some of you folks out there. So there'll be four of you folks that'll win five uh, grow bags total for a total of 20 grow bags that we'll be giving away this evening. I feel, you know, I'm just sometimes you're in that giving mood, you know, and you just want to help out folks. So uh, good luck to everyone here uh, in a little bit. I got grow bags probably a year or so ago. They are, I mean, I love grow bags, to be honest with you. That to me, I, I, I'm probably going to go bigger. And uh, the problem is, is a lot of you folks know that I'm going to be moving soon. Uh, so that's why, like, the portability of these grow bags, they can come with me. Some plants may may not make it. Most will. Uh, and uh, you can move with the sun. You can move around with the sun. If you want to move it into the shade, if you have a plant and you're growing it, and you're like, man, this thing is getting way too much sun. Let me move this grow bag over a little bit and uh, put it towards the shade. Uh, so I like that. That, that 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 aspect of the grow bags. James, I appreciate that super chat. I would like to help uh, offset the grow bag costs. James, you didn't have to do that, man. That $20, brother, uh, is going to go towards uh, the uh, basically what we're doing uh, this year. Basically, we're, all the money that I derive from YouTube over the next few months is going to go to uh, a food bank. Not money, but we're going to go buy a bunch of canned goods and drop off food at a food bank. But I appreciate that, James. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. I truly do. Yes, true. Gray pots are flexible. And, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between a grow bag and a plastic pot? Well, basically, I don't know if you heard of air pruning. So it's the way your roots kind of grow in a grow bag and they reach to the end of the grow bag and the air kind of stops them from pushing and balling up. Uh, so it's much more natural. Uh, when you put them in a plastic pot, and you know, you ever pulled, you know, when you're transplanting plants and you pull them out of that plastic pot and you notice there's a big root ball and it's all kind of spun around. Well, that doesn't happen in the grow bag technically. Uh, and I know it sounds crazy, the air pruning thing, but it does. It, it kind of stops those, uh, those, uh, those uh, roots from going too far. And it kind of just spread throughout that bag. There's pros and cons, but I'd rather you guys go watch the videos and me kind of take up too much of your time on that. But, uh, that's awesome. Uh, I just saw something pop up there. John Jones, I'm setting up a six by three by 18 grow bag today. That's awesome. That's awesome. And they make all kinds of grow bags out there. Um, I'm experimenting. And the reason I'm doing these videos on grow bags is so that some of you folks can see what I'm growing, how I'm growing, how I'm developing, how, I, how am I amending the dirt? How am I filling them? How am I saving money uh, so that you don't have to spend that time? I'm here uh, at your disposable, uh, like a little, uh, uh, audio book per se, right? <laughs> Didn't know about that air pruning. Yeah, Homestead Oz, uh, check it out. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, there's a lot of little intriguing things. You know, I, I'm one of those, I guess you could say a nerd. Once I find something that intrigues me, I dive deep into it. And uh, I like to like research it, you know, as much as I possibly can. Uh, and I'm learning all these crazy things. You know, my goal is to be, I want to be like David the Good. I want to be like some of these guys. I want to be an epic gardener. You know, I want that green thumb. What's up, Arkansas? What's up, Dobby? All right. So uh, let's get into uh, first. We're going to get into uh, a couple articles, clips that I have in regards to uh, the food bank situation. And uh, I knew this was going to happen. I've talked about this about six, about six months ago. <clears throat> I said things are going to start happening that's going to be a uh, big issue in regards to food and food banks because of the inflation, because of everything that's happening, food banks are going to be in a very tight spot because a lot of people are going to be turning to them for food because they can't afford food anymore. Uh, and I don't even want to talk about, you know, I, I watched the, uh, the spiel today from uh, Washington and uh, I was not impressed. Uh, by the current administration and what they had to say. Um, I just think it's a, a, just a, something to calm people's nerves, just to kind of like, uh, sure, we're going to fix it. Well, I'll fix it. Right now, everything is going, keeps on skyrocketing. So I haven't seen a fix yet. All right, so let's bring up these articles. I also have several photos for you folks, uh, a couple that I've taken, uh, as well as some that's been sent to me that I want to share with you folks as well. And uh, let me pull up that folder. Where are we at here at the channel? Shout outs. There's the articles. Excuse me. So uh, I'm going to bring up this one first. 
Let me drop this down and bring this up. Now, you guys can probably see that just as good as I can. It says demand increases as food banks struggle with fewer donations. And that's a shame, folks. Uh, you know, how many of you folks out there uh, have, uh, you know, reached out to a food bank once in your life? I know I have. As a single father at one point in my life with my three boys, I had no choice. I had no choice. I had to reach out to a food bank uh, and a couple local churches for help. Uh, and at that point in my life, you know, I started making different decisions to get myself out of that situation and, you know, getting deeper into emergency preparedness. Anyways, it says the empty shelves at the San Antonio Food Bank tell of growing demand versus available supply. Uh, still, President Eric Cooper says he is not panicked yet. He is not panicked yet. Hmm. Yet seems to be the operative word, Cooper says, as the Texas-based food bank critical to meeting the nutrition needs of 90,000 individuals each week. Not a day. Not, you know, this is not over a long period of time. This is a week. 90,000 people a week. That's a lot of folks uh, that are going without. Uh, anyways, he monitors the food donation situation very closely. The demand is outpacing some of the incoming supply, emptying some of those shelves. We're not crazy panic, but if it erodes uh, a lot of our existing inventory and we're not able to keep up the flow, backstopping it, uh, basically, you know, recouping it, uh, it can bankrupt the food bank, Cooper told the Epoch Times. So if things don't get resolved soon for this, this food bank uh, that services that area, uh, they might not go bankrupt. They might not be there anymore. They may disappear. And those people will definitely be in a very tight situation. Anyways, it says, like many other food banks across the country, the San Antonio Food Bank is dealing with the efforts effects of inflation, which translates into higher demand and fewer donations. That's rough. I think I have part two of this. There it is. Yeah, I do have a part two. I'm getting a little bit better at this, folks. <laughs> In any case, it says, when we think supply chain, it's all about the movement and the cost of movement. Everything transported is being charged at a higher premium because of the cost of diesel, Cooper says. Diesel prices are outrageous. The greatest need is lean protein. Now in shorter supply due to the highly infectious avian flu that has forced many poultry farms to cull their bird populations. We've talked about that as well. The skyrocketing cost of fertilizer and lack of availability uh, impact farmers' ability to grow food. It's a weather vane pointing to a perfect storm, Cooper said, as I've been saying, as a lot of people have been saying, perfect storm is a brewing, folks. You add, uh, you add for individual families the cost of rent. Folks can't afford to pay their rent. You can't afford, uh, they can't afford groceries. Texas is on the verge of one of our hottest summers. Utilities will be sky high. The cost of energy. People are seeing that. The cost of energy. It's going to be a hot summer. You guys, we've talked about the mega drought. We've talked about that whole situation out west. Some of the hottest weather. Uh, people are breaking records. What was it? Someone sent me something. Was it Julie? Did Julie or Harvey? Someone sent me something. Or maybe it was in Discord in regards to uh, their local weather. Uh, that they're seeing 90s. Some of the hottest temperatures ever. Uh, breaking records, folks. The heat. So that air condition and those fans. It's going to cost some of these folks. It's going to price them right out of their house. Scary thought. Anyways, it says, all of this is adding up to a perfect storm of need and demand. We are suffering from some of the same symptoms, higher fuel costs, the ability to procure food, uh, you know, trying to find it like we are. You know, a lot of people are looking for food and they're seeing empty shelves. Not always, but many times. Sometimes paying more than we ever have. Uh, everybody feel that pain in their wallet. Everybody, everybody out there is paying more for food. Uh, if you can find a sale and it's something that you and your family consume, I'd grab it up. Anyways, it says, uh, all of this is adding up to a perfect storm. Oh, no, I read that one. <laughs> From dry goods to canned food, even baby formula, which we've talked about. And I'm going to show you some pictures. I decided to go to a couple stores today and check out the baby formula section. Uh, the San Antonio Food Bank is struggling to meet growing demand against dwindling supply. Uh, you know, I have another article here. Before I go into the gasoline, uh, this is from an old folks home. People love to play bingo. And I apologize. I can't really see chat at the moment. So uh, I do apologize for that. But uh, this is about bingo. You know, old folks, you know, they're living on Social Security. They're on a fixed income. So they go to bingo to kind of, you know, get out of the house, you know, and meet friends and socialize and stuff like that. And hopefully they can win some cash or win some, you know, some trinkets or whatnot. But the bingo game is changing up, folks. Check this out. 
It says, in response to inflation, the prices at Bingo have changed in recent weeks at the Miller Senior Center in Mill, uh, Millersville, Pennsylvania. Instead of fun little trinkets, winning bingo players now choose between cleaning supplies, uh, laundry items, or snacks, depending on a theme of the week. Senior Center District star uh, Brubaker told the Epoch Times. Dryer sheets and spray bottles of detergent are practical items that help defray the growing cost of living. Seniors say they are... Uh, they are happy to win such prizes because they are feeling the inflation in all areas of their lives and they are worried and they don't and that they won't have enough money to get by in the future. So they're looking they're even these senior citizens are looking uh, they're having the, the forethought to look uh, in the future that if this continues, they're going to be in a bad situation. Anyways, this is one senior at the center said her husband is a retirement age, but he is not retiring yet because they fear it will be difficult to keep up with inflation. That sucks. Uh, you know, these are some of our grandparents. These are some of our grandfolks uh, out there struggling. They're on a fixed income. They're on Social Security. And most of you folks know Social Security is not much. Oh, uh, <laughs> I had to look over there. Lori D says, senior on a fixed income here. Thank you, Lori. And, and that's what I'm saying. Because most of my viewers, uh, my viewer base is about 45 to about 70. Uh, that's what YouTube tells me that most of my beer base is about 45 to 70 and 54% of you are women and the rest are men. Uh, it used to be the opposite. I don't know what happened. Anyways, folks, uh, that is quite disturbing. Speaking of grow bags, let's jump back on that real fast. Um, I want to show you guys something because someone's asked me, they said, Hey, Gray, I cannot find your, uh, I cannot find your community tab. Some of you already have. I'm going to bring that up now and I'm going to show you how to get to the community tab because the community tab on someone's YouTube channel can be very beneficial to you. Sometimes we'll leave little notes there, a uh, little like, let's say if I have a situation where I can't go live uh, or uh, I'm going to be on someone else's channel, I will leave that down in the community tab. So basically when you go to someone's channel, now I know it's different on the phone. I'm using a computer, but same purpose. If you go to someone's channel and you hit their channel, uh, you can go to their home, you know, uh, go to their videos. You know, I always tell you guys to check out videos. If you haven't seen them yet, playlists, which I'm really getting better at. Uh, you guys can check all kinds of different playlists. Uh, you want to watch gear reviews. You want to watch medicinal Mondays. You want to watch gardening videos. Uh, there's something, everything, Florida outdoor videos. Uh, I have a bunch of different stuff, but we're focusing on, on the community tab. All right. And it looks like some of you folks have already did this. So in the community tab, I have, what should we grow in the next 50 gallon grow bag? Because that was the, the question I asked in that video after I showed you what I'm growing in there, my pepper, my little pepper bag, as I like to call it. Um, I wanted to get some information from you guys. What would you guys like to see in the next 50 gallon grow bag? Now I do have a surprise. Um, I was talking to Jeff Riffle uh, on the phone or texting back and forth. And Jeff said, Hey, you know, you should do this. I said, believe it or not, Jeff, I only thought I had one but I have three others or four more. I, ha I have several other 50 gallon grow bags that I didn't know I had. And the wife was like, yes, you do. So we are going to first, we're going to run this. I want everybody to get an opportunity and check this out and vote. Have your vote counted so far. It looks like potatoes are winning. Now I said, someone said, Hey, Gray, uh, in the heat, uh, potatoes won't do well right now in Florida, but I'm one of those folks that, uh, I like to take risk. Potatoes are very cheap. I'm going to give it a shot because my sweet potatoes are doing good. So why can't I try some uh, white potatoes? So if potatoes wins out in this, I'm going to have to try to grow some potatoes. I have some tricks up my sleeves. I've been doing my research, but so far potatoes is winning. Now, if you said where it says other right down here, it says, leave a comment. Uh, and what I mean by that is some of your ideas. Um, I also like the three sisters idea. Uh, it's three sister planting. You got the corn, uh, then you got the peas, and then you have like a, let's say a zucchini or a squash. Uh, it's something that uh, dates back to, uh, you know, uh, Native Americans and something they would do. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, and I've done research on that as well. Uh, so we are going to do something of that nature, which is one of my favorite things to say, at least what I'm learned. So hopefully now you guys will be able to find the community tab or at least anybody who watched this live stream. Pole beans. Don't we have enough potatoes in D.C.? <laughs> right, Julie? Corn. Everybody go check corn. <laughs> um, uh, and Emperor's Kimberly, I may still do corn. 
you know, Duke man, I don't know if you guys are part of my discord, uh, Duke man kind of made me a little bit jealous. I was looking at his, some of his grow bags he did a while back and he did corn in his grow bags. Yeah. I think he used a 50 gallon grow bag as well. And it did very good. It was awesome. So I'm thinking, well, Duke did it. I got to do it. Right. <laughs> Grow something you've never grown before. Well, Mag Stewart, I've never grown regular white potatoes. I've never have. I know it sounds crazy. Sweet potatoes? Yes, I have. I've never grown corn, and I've never grown white potatoes. That's why I kind of threw those out there. Uh, if I fail, I fail. But at least I will learn from that failure. Uh, and if I don't, and it produces very well, because someone people made some great comments in the section. Well, you know, if you grow potatoes in there, it's a lot of dirt to move. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, I can see that. Um, but I have an idea for that as well. I I'll take out one of my prepper tarps, you know, one of these tarps I have, I will, I I'm, uh, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm, I'm a kind of a strong guy. I feel like I'm strong. Um, but I can move that bag around pretty good. So if I grow the potatoes, I will dump it in a tarp, uh, dig out my potatoes and then save my dirt, you know, because I like to always reuse last year's dirt. Uh, and re-amend it and revitalize that dirt with nutrients because dirt's not cheap, folks. Um, and also, like I said, the other uh, the other grow bag video that I did, I linked in that video, um, is how I start my grow bags. You know what I mean? How to save money on when you build these grow bags out. So, uh, and the reason, you know, it, it's urban homesteading per se, right? A lot of people like to use that term, urban homesteading. We, we live in the suburbs and we're somewhat trying to homestead. We're, we're gardening these large gardens. Some people don't have the space, but if you have a patio, you can either do vertical gardening, uh, grow bags. I mean, they have three gallons all the way up to, I guess someone just told me they have 500 gallon grow bags. Now, eventually I might go that direction because I'm having a lot of intrigue with this 50 gallon grow bag and it's doing very well. It's retaining moisture better than the other grow bags. It's uh, keeping more nutrients in there. Instead of watering it every other day uh, with this Florida heat and, and humidity, uh, I don't have to water only but once a week. So that's saving me money. Now, also, there's a trick. Someone said, I don't like using grow bags because uh, you have to water them a lot. So, yes, with grow bags, uh, they're very good drainers. You know what I mean? And they do that for a purpose uh, because they don't want the water to sit on your roots and create root rot. They don't want to sit on your root vegetables and create those and mold and all that stuff like that. But if you have certain plants, like let's say a tomato plant, you guys ever seen those little plastic dishes? You can put those under there. I've ordered some, and I'm going to show on one of my videos. I'm going to use them on some of my plants. I'm going to put those under. I think I got the 15-inch ones for my uh, 5 or 10-gallon. or Yeah, and I'm going to put it under, and you fill a little bit of water up in there. That way that that moisture can still rise up in there. But also, using the peat moss and the straw and all the other techniques that I'm using in these grow bags uh, will save you on watering as well. Uh, and that's why you guys see me using a lot of the straw. Uh, the straw protects that soil because the sun here in Florida is mean and nasty, even though the plants love it. Uh, and uh, but it 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 burns off a lot of nutrients and moisture off the soil. Uh, so that creates a problem. Savage prepper overflow. I use grow bags. Uh, Gypsy flat. That's awesome. I like hearing uh, kitty pools work great, but uh, buy them on clearance. Yarn prepper, you're absolutely right. I seen someone buy a kiddie pool and put a bunch of a bunch of grow bags in there, and uh, just put the water just you know you know about an inch or so. And then if, if you're living in Florida, you're saying, well, mosquitoes. You know the mosquitoes are going to start nesting in there. Well, you take those little mosquito tabs, and they're harmful. They're not they're they're not going to affect your food. Uh, regardless of what they say, they, they, they're all natural things. You can find ways around this stuff, folks. Uh, but you can put a little thing in there and it kills any eggs that uh, mosquitoes would lay in that little kitty pool. Uh, and most of the times your plants are going to be absorbing that up faster than you would think. <laughs> but anyways, that's my take on those grow bags. Uh, potato head, I use totes. Well, see, potato, uh, potato head, a lot of folks use totes. Uh, I've seen people, people go to Walmart. Walmart has these one bags. You can get them for 50 cents sometimes. Not they're more expensive ones, but they're a cloth material, not the plasticky material. People use, uh, what is it? The uh, potato sacks, the old potato sacks. People use a lot of different things. Buckets, uh, anything you can find, you can grow in. But here's what I want you guys to be careful with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Um, 
but what you want to do is be mindful if you're growing. Okay. So you figure you guys know what BPAs are, right? And all the bad stuff that's in plastic. That's the one thing you want to watch out for because as you leave these things in your garden and the elements affect that plastic, especially here in Florida, the heat, uh, it's going, if, if any of that plastic that you're growing in has any type of, uh, adulterants, you know, any type of BPAs or chemicals inside that, that will eventually leach into your soil and then leach into your roots. Uh, and then that's going to go into the fruit or vegetables or whatever you're growing. And especially if you're growing root vegetables, sometimes you want to be careful. Now, this is my opinion. I don't want people to, to, to yell at me and scream at me. I've been doing this for a hundred years. I'm still alive. That's great. I know. I'm just saying you might want to be mindful. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. You know, I'm just saying these are some of the things that have been brought to my attention by local farmers that I talk to other people in chats, other discussion boards, wherever Gray happens to find himself one day uh, d doing this research. I just want you guys to have the availability to grow the most healthiest possible food that you can, uh, because there's a lot of people that use five gallon buckets for growing. I prefer to use five gallon buckets for food storage, you know, so however you want to do it. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of tidbit information. I'm not saying I'm right either. I'm just giving you my opinion. So please don't yell at me. <laughs> Dot 457, your internet's back on. Auslander, you're absolutely right. Join the Discord server, folks. And our we have a phenomenal Discord server. We have a herbal recipe section with Voodoo Queen. Uh, we have a garden section in there. Uh, we have chat rooms in there for you guys to folks. If you're living in Texas, you can chat with people in Texas. If you live in Australia, you can chat with people in Australia and you can jump around. You can direct message people, ask questions. There's a wealth of information on our discord server and it's free. I know there's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a technical thing that some people get scared of, you know, because like I'm 75 years old. I don't want to go on no discord. I understand. But believe it or not, it's a lot easier because I'm, I wasn't a fan of it either. If it wasn't for Harvey and some of the other folks that have helped me keep this running, it would fall apart, but it's taken a, uh, it's taken a, uh, life of its own per se. You know, there's all kinds of folks in there. I, I don't even know if all those folks even watch my channel, but they interact with each other. We got folks from all over the country, uh, that get involved in that. And it's awesome. Uh, right. Hey, Julie, and that, every, that's your choice. You know, people, if they don't want it, you don't have to, it's just an option, just an option, folks. Joyce Tara says, you're right. Gray. Anything you put in, uh, or on your soil would be taken up into the produce. Uh, agreed. Uh, Joyce, that's how I feel about it as well. That's why I'm very, I'm trying to be very mindful. I used to use last year. I used seven dust and people like you use what seven dust. Uh, and I was like, well, someone told me, and that was the only way I can get rid of the stuff. I still have some, but I'm trying to use everything but those type of chemicals. Seven dust works great. It does the job, but is it organic? You know, is it something that, that I want to use on a consistent basis? Uh, I'm learning about bugs, certain bugs that are beneficial to your garden, how to get those bugs in your garden, companion planting. Now, you know, a little bit of dish soap and, and water, uh, Things like uh, different herbs, uh, all kinds of different things that you can use to offset pests. Now, I know some folks, uh, you know, there's issues uh, with deer and squirrels and raccoons and moles and all that stuff like that. Luckily, I haven't had to deal with that yet. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I've done a little research and I'm working on it. But when I deal with it, I'll deal with it. Uh, that's what you always have to do is you have to understand when you're growing food, there will be, you have to accept there's going to be losses. Uh, let's say a major hurricane comes to, to my part of the town and wipes out majority of my garden, but I still have a ton of canned foods and also freeze dried foods so that I can work for next year's grow. So that's the way I think, okay, if my garden fails, what else do I have in place, uh, to fill that void to the next grow? You know what I mean? So that's how I hope a lot of you folks are thinking. Um, people grow indoors, you know, uh, people do microgreens. There's a lot of different stuff uh, with the whole growing stuff. Now I want to, I think I had something else I wanted to share with you guys as I'm sitting here carrying on, but you know, what I really love about the live streams is we are able to have these conversations and learn from each other. Um, and God forbid, I'm not right. Matter of fact, I do have to make a correction. I'm going to go over this article 
And then I need to make a correction uh, that I made a big mistake on the Sunday shift report, folks. And I got to come clean that I, I read into something and I read it wrong and I need to share it with you guys. But first, let's go over this article here. This one I can't get wrong. <laughs> At least I hope not. This will be the last article uh, that you guys have to have to deal with. All right. So this says U.S. gasoline prices hit new record, new record high. Now, it may drop a little bit. I'm not sure. I was looking at the market right before we came on here on the live stream and saw that uh, that uh, crude oil took a hit today because the economy is slowing down. People are like I can't they can't travel. They're trying to find jobs that are working at home, which is creating another issue in itself because they're trying to save money. Anyways, it says gas prices in the United States hit a record high on Tuesday as crude oil continues to reign above $100 a barrel, with some states seeing prices above $5 per gallon. Matter of fact, I have, uh, I have a picture from Chief, uh, Chief Prepper uh, that he sent me earlier, and I'll show that here in a minute. And I also have the pictures of some empty shelves that I wanted to show you in my area and someone else, I think Tina sent me a picture of her egg section in her uh, in her store. It says the average price of regular unleaded gas on May 10th was $4.37 per gallon, beating the earlier record of $4.33 per gallon set on March 11th. Man, and I, we and a lot of folks, I remember several live streams ago, they are like, hey, man, gas is dropping. I'm like, yeah, that's temporary. That's a temporary situation. As we approach summer, it's going to skyrocket because the supply is not going to meet the demand and the cost is going to skyrocket because that's when people do a lot of their traveling for vacationings. But with inflation, who knows what we might see. I could be eating my words here in a couple of months. Anyways, uh, this is according to data from the American Automobile Association, AAA, which a lot of you folks are familiar with. Compared to a week ago when the price was $4.20 a gallon, current gas prices are up by over 4%. When compared to $4.16 per gallon a month ago, the May 10th price is up by over 6.26%. Gas prices have increased by over 47%. Uh, from two dollars and ninety six cents per gallon a year ago, man, don't you guys miss those dollar eighty nine, dollar ninety gas prices uh, back uh, back before uh, this administration took power? Good times, huh? Anyways, the state with the highest average gas prices is California. I don't know how Californians do it, to be honest with you. Everything seems to be skyrocketing in California between the droughts and and the gas prices and inflation. I'm surprised everybody's not moving out of there. Anyways, with fuel being uh, priced at $5.84 per gallon, in contrast, Georgia registered the lowest gas prices at $3.90 per gallon. So go Georgia. In three states, gas per gallon was priced above $5, while in six states, gas was priced below $4. In the international market, Brent crude oil futures were trading at about $105 per barrel. Uh, WTI crude oil futures uh, followed closely about $103 a barrel. Now, that's if nothing else happens. Uh, gas will stay around this price or maybe go a little higher. Uh, my gas here locally is about $4.409 with my discount card. So I think it was like $4.19. Alien Prepper, good to see you. Thanks for beaming down and hanging out with us. What's up, Survival Buzz? $3.79 in Oklahoma. That's awesome, Survival Buzz. Uh, is that at a discount store like uh, Cumberland Farms where you get the little 10 cents off or like a Costco or Sam's or anything stuff like that? Vansity. Uh, and I can't convert that Vansity. So uh, I know a lot of people have said that uh, that well, that uh, that it converts a lot higher, that gas in Canada is pretty high, which is weird because C Canada has those tar pits, don't they? I know it's not the best oil. I prefer, I remember reading an article on tar pits, but also Canada has a lot of large deposits of oil. I think we in the United States even get oil from Canada. Barbara says, just grow anywhere and anything. Just grow. Uh, you'll be glad you'll grow this fall. Exactly, Barbara. Just go out there and grow something, folks. That's awesome. Velocity, a.k.a. Sloth Mom, says $4.79. Portage, Indiana, 45 minutes from Chicago. Man, some high prices. Van Roos says $4.29 $4 in Port Charlotte, Florida. Howdy, neighbor. Let's Talk Prepping says $4.49 in Connecticut. Oh, speaking of, I just saw Chief in there. Let me go to that. Uh, let me go back to this and show cheese. Let me let's just show these pictures and get that out so we can get so we can get to just chatting uh, before we run out of time, right? Let me back this up and go to my picture folder. Oh, we still got to do the giveaway too. So where is that picture, Chief? What did I do with that picture? I thought I sent it to myself, Chief. Hold on, folks. 
I got to get that picture. Chief sent me a picture, and I don't think I downloaded it off my Gmail. There it is. Download now. I appreciate your folks' patience, as always. That looks good there. Let's bounce back here. <clears throat> and also, I'm going to show you something. A, way, uh, you, a lot of you guys say about freeze-dried foods and how expensive it is. I found a little bit of uh, something that might help some of you. What's up? What's up, Rudy? Good to see you. Uh, all right, Chief. Let me see if I can find this, Chief. Here it is. All right. Let me bring my uh, screen back up so you can see it. So Chief was out there, uh, and uh, this is the prices that he ran into. I uh, think, Chief, you said in Washington, uh, Washington State you're in? And that's of as of today, right? So 465 for regular, 485 and four, uh, 505 for uh, the high octane stuff. I'm glad my vehicle only takes 87. <clears throat> but thank you for sharing that, Chief. Uh, and then I have those pictures. Let me go to those pictures for you. Move that over there. I know I'm going to start singing to kind of fill the void of the uh, awkward silence when I'm looking for stuff. <laughs> Anyways, folks, I do appreciate all you guys being here tonight. It's always good to see so many awesome people in chat. So this is the, uh, I want to show first, I'm going to show what Tina sent me. And uh, I think Tina West, I think, sent me this in the email. This is her section of eggs uh, in her local store. I forget where Tina's from. Uh, she said that she asked why this is the only eggs that she can find. And no one would give her a straight answer, folks. No one would give her a straight answer. Uh, she asked the clerks, she asked the manager. She said, no one would give her a straight answer. This is insane folks. Mine doesn't look that way. There's some holes, but not as bad. Uh, I'm going to move this back. So where is this? This is, so this was when Dixie, uh, today, matter of fact, I think, was it? Yeah, it was today when Dixie today, I wanted to show you, these are some of the canned goods sections. And if you look in here, this is like that canned canned meats and stuff. And there's your spam. And some of your other goodies down there, little Vienna sausages and stuff, just kind of moving around a little bit, but it was looking a bit sparse. And this is Walmart. Look at the top of this section right here, folks. That's where usually they keep their overstock. Uh, but this was not this was not looking good. So some of you are asking, well, what is this piece of paper there, Gray? What is that piece of paper? Well, I took a picture of that too. All right. Let me go. Before we get into the formula, let me go to the, there it is. So this is the paper that was on the shelf because I was wondering what it said too. And it goes into this whole thing and I'm not going to read all this stuff to you, but I really wanted to show you number three here, which says replacing items that are no longer available. So there's a lot of things that Walmart, the big monster that it is, cannot get. And uh, they're replacing it with other stuff to try to fill in those holes uh, to do whatever they can. All right. Now let's move on to the formula situation. Formula situation is getting really bad. Uh, even here locally. This is this is my store here locally. Uh, it says due to manufacturer's recall, item, the following items have been removed. So I guess there's a recall on certain formula, Similac baby powder. It says for your protection, we will not stock this product until further notice. We apologize for any inconvenience. This was dated back in February. This was dated back in February. Let me see here. This is Winn-Dixie. This is when Dixie's formula section. Uh, there's some in there, but not too much. There's some in there, but not too much. This is when Dixie. This is their formula section. And I thought I had, where is it at? I don't want to do that. I thought I had uh, Walmart's. I thought I had Walmart's section in there too. Let me double check to see if I still have that photo. But I thought I had a Walmart, uh, I took a picture of Walmart's baby food section or baby food formula section as well. Oh, there, you know, <laughs> I marked it wrong. Anyways, I thought I had it in here, but I'm not going to waste your guys' time and try to dig it up. But Walmart was also in the same situation that when Dixie was as well. Actually, they were hurt a little bit worse. Uh, they didn't have uh, much in there. Now, freeze-dried food, folks. A lot of you folks are like, man, freeze-dried food is too expensive. Um, so I found a way. This might not work for everybody, but I feel it's my duty uh, as a content creator uh, in the proper community to share anytime I find something that might work for some of you folks. Um, 
I don't know if you guys uh, know, uh, la uh, let me see. I think it's uh, Latter-day Saints. Let me see here. Let me pull up their website for you. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's it there. Let's add this to the stream. So they have this section here uh, where you can get food. So if you go to uh, Provident, uh, let me see, it's, it's providentliving.churchofjesuschrist.org. Uh, I wish, I, I'm going to put this in chat. Matter of fact, that's what I'll probably do. I'll just put this in chat so that you guys can find it. I'm going to copy that and I'll put it in chat here in a second. But anyways, you can find these sections and you're probably wondering, well, great, what, is, what does all this mean? So let's say if you're living in somewhere near Atlanta, uh, wherever here in South Carolina, wherever they might have a, a place at, and you can get the information. And the reason I'm showing you this stuff is because of this right here. Uh, yeah, figure it out, Gray. Where'd she go? Let me bring up my folder. You guys can watch me. Desktop, downloads. Where's my Gray Man folder? And where's my live stream folder? <laughs> there she is. So let me bring up this PDF so that you guys can see this. So this is for freeze-dried foods. Slide that over. Now you guys can see that there. Uh, and you can download this from this website. So basically, I'm going to move over here. Apple slices, number 10 can. Black beans, pinto beans, refried beans. Here's the storage life in years. It tells you the number 10 cans. And they have a whole bunch of stuff. Potato flakes, instant potatoes, pancake mixes, onions, oats, all kinds of stuff. This is the price, folks. Look at these prices. You want a number 10 can of black beans that'll last you 30 years? $5.50. Now, I'm not saying this is the way to go. You can buy black beans and buy a five-gallon bucket and, you know, and, and do, do it that way. But if you're looking for stuff like, let's say, uh, carrots, uh, freeze-dried carrots, flour, uh, stuff like that uh, in some of these number 10 cans here. I don't know if you guys can see all that. Oats, onions, uh, a variety of stuff. Uh, sugar, spaghetti, whatever that you want, are relatively, these prices are pretty cheap. Well, some people are like, well, how are they so cheap? Well, come to find out, all they use is volunteers uh, to do this work. And they have their own canning and stuff like that. They use their own number 10 cans and stuff like that. So if you can't find it through the website, if you need it from me, if, if one of these places are near you, you can give them a call and ask them what they have to offer. You fill out this list, you go in there, and it's like a grocery list and you can help you out. Now, this might not work for everybody, but I wanted to share it with you because it might help someone out there. It might help someone out there. Uh, angels arrived. Uh, like I said, you. Uh, I'm here. Let me put this here. Maybe let me paste this here. If you go to this website, that's the website there uh, that I just posted. Uh, and click on the PDF and download it to your uh, – you can download it to your phone, download it to uh, – your thing, but if you go to the website, it'll tell you where those locations are because you're going to have to fill that out. Now, some people say, "Where did you find this at?" Funnily enough, funny enough, uh, it was at it was at a prepper. Uh, uh, you know how they have the shot show? Uh, what are they called? These uh, these big shows. You know, you go to these conventions. It was at a prepper convention, and they were there promoting their product to the people, to preppers. So that's why I'm sharing it with you guys, because that's the market they're trying to reach out. And they have videos on emergency preparedness. They're teaching their folks about preparedness. Uh, there's links, there's testimonials, there's all that stuff there. Something for you to check out. You know what I mean? I just figured I would share it with you folks. Is it any good still? If so, does anyone else need it? I'm in Texas. Sorry, they were saying on Fox heating oil will be up to eight dollars a gallon this fall. That's crazy, and I bet, and I bet they're probably right. It might even be higher, Empress. Could even be higher. I love rice milk. Grandma would feed it to us. It was rice made and boiled milk was so good. Uh, JT, thanks for that link. Hopefully, hopefully, I said that will help you folks out. Oh wow, JT, that I'm clicking on that link too. JT, clicking on that link too. White wheat. Nice. All right. Where are we at on time? We're 49 minutes. Shall we do the giveaway? Should we do the giveaway now? Do you guys want to do the giveaway now? Does anybody want to win some grow bags? We're going to have four people win five grow bags. So you'll have five grow bags at five gallons. So you have 25, uh, 25 gallons worth of uh, grow bags to fill. <laughs> but yes, 
there's going to be four winners. You win five bags. Uh, each bag is, or no, four bags. Yeah, no, four is 20 gallons. So five times four is 20. Yeah, so five bags. That's what I'm going to be sending you. Five, five gallon grow bags to four of you folks out there. Heck yeah. Wait a little longer, Quest Conquest. Let's see what I'm not going to win today. Right, Os? I, I don't even know if I can send it to Australia. Yep. Grow bags. <laughs> All right, folks. I only have about another 10, well, about a, a nine, 10 minutes left uh, before we have that hour up. And hopefully, if you haven't hit that thumbs up button, do so. Uh, you know, I, I used to think that the thumbs up button didn't do anything uh, and come to find out that it does. Who would have thought that hitting the thumbs up button or thumbs down actually does something? YouTube loves to see that interaction. What's up, Nature Girl? Joe Info says, do it. All right. So let's. I got to, now that I had that Augustine's farm thing up and I'm an affiliate of Augustine's farm, I should reach out to him. as like, Hey, what kind of deals can I get? <laughs> All right. Let's bring up the stream yard giveaway tool. That's always fun, right? And we're going to do four draws on this and I'm going to have to get some, a piece of paper before I let you guys know what the keyword's going to be. So I can write down winners. Now I'm also going to put this up because if you win something, if you win something, this is where you need to send it to. All right. So let's bring up my screen so you guys can watch this live. And I hope that whoever wins these uh, needs them. You know what I mean? I hope it's somebody that needs them and someone that's going to utilize these. Uh, and uh, I want everyone to have an opportunity to grow something this year, to be honest with you. I wish I can give every single one of you a grow bag. Uh, that would be awesome. Maybe one day, maybe one day it'll work out that way for me. And I'll be able to give my all my viewers a grow bag for me to you. But tonight, we're going to pick four winners. All right. So the key word is, as you can see right here, you want to put all caps, one word, grow bag, G-R-O-W-B-A-G. It has to be in all caps, all one word. If not, you will not be counted. So have at it, folks. Have at it. Zero entries. Did I did I do something wrong? Up oh, there's eight. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I said, did I mess something up here? But again, folks. Uh, matter of fact, I think Rudy is watching us. Rudy's here tonight. Uh, thank you as always, brother. It's always good to see you. Uh, thank you, phone. Thank you, phone. Um, and it's muted. I don't know why it makes that noises. Uh, and yes, I'm a fan of Zelda. Uh, I've been playing that game since I was a kid. Anyways, uh, Rudy, I think last year, I think remember watching Rudy uh, grow, uh, wasn't it, Rudy, you grew up potatoes and grow bags last year? I think you did, Rudy. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I think I remember you talking about growing potatoes and grow bags last year. But I, know, I think you did have grow bags as well. So far, 78 entries. I'm just going to let it ride so far. I think I need a better pen. Other than that, I want to say thank you all for joining me and being here this evening. And like I said, hopefully you got some value out of this outside of just getting uh, some free uh, grow bags. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I love a one giving back to the community. I love sharing information. And I always hope that every video that I do, if I could at least touch one soul out there and get them better prepared than they were yesterday. Job well done. Job well done. I mean, we have how many people we have in chat? We have 174 people in chat. And uh, yes, if you don't need a grow bag and if you're not interested in grow bags, don't worry about participating, but I appreciate you being here. I, I really do. I, I really do appreciate you guys being here. Uh, and like I said, hopefully uh, you found something during this stream. If you're new to the channel, say hello. Uh, I, I like the way Rudy does that because I never thought about seeing who's new to the live streams. Uh, some of you folks uh, will automatically let me know that you're new to the live stream, but it's good to see some of the new names out there. You know what I mean? Uh, and welcome to the live stream. Uh, and like I said, we have a phenomenal community here. Uh, a lot of friendly faces, a lot of friendly people with lots of great information outside of my own. So, uh, and uh, it's always nice to know that the community is growing each day and each week. All right, I'm going to give it another minute, folks. We got 92 in there so far. 92, folks. 93. And then we're going to start pulling names. And Rudy, I didn't. I want to let you know that everybody has told me that they got their uh, Alaska Prepper Silver, so that's awesome. Thank you, Rudy, for that. Uh, but everybody kind of let me in, include me in that they have uh, they either emailed me uh, or told me in chat that they got their stuff. So that's good to hear. 
All right. Looks like we're, uh, let me see. Alan Turpin, you're newish. Well, I appreciate you being here, Alan. Let me see here. There's a lot of stuff that says grow bag on here. <laughs> All right. 96, 96 folks. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. Uh, one word in all caps. Thank you. Yarn. Yarn's a pro at this. And, uh, you know, moderators, you know, truly the unsung heroes of every YouTube channel out there. You know, you guys, you guys are awesome. You guys help this thing work. And, uh, I, I have some surprises for you this year, uh, moderators, uh, but stay tuned. Also, I think Thursday night, we're going to talk about the Florida meetup as well. A lot of people have been asking me, hey, Gray, let's do a Florida meetup of preparedness. And what I want to do in that meetup, I'm going to discuss on Thursday as well uh, on the late show at 1030 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we'll talk a little bit about the Florida meetup on that stream. Uh, and uh, we're going to get some ideas from you, the viewers, and uh, put something together. All right. So we have 99 entries. Anybody else? One more? Let's draw. Let's stop dragging this out, Gray, and get to it. Let's see who our first winner is going to be. Let's see who our first winner is going to be. <laughs> Chet Volts. C-H-E-T. Make sure I spell your name, brother. All right, Chet. So you see the email down below. It says, winners, please email me at graysgiveaways at gmail.com. Please tell me where to send that to, Chet. I appreciate that. And congratulations, brother. Congratulations. You'll be getting some grow bags this year. And anybody who wins these grow bags, please let me know in an email down the road or in a live stream uh, what you're growing and how's it going. If you enjoy them, they're working well for you. All right, let's do it again. Let's do it again. I'm excited. I'm excited. Look at all these great names coming across the board. Hey, look, you're new to the live stream, Alan, and you won something, Alan. See, it pays to be part of the community, man. All right, Alan. This is great. Someone who's new to the live stream and wins. That's pretty cool. All right, we still have 103 entries. Let's draw again. We got two more draws to go, two more draws. 104 entries. Someone come in last. Someone just came in. All right. <laughs> Look at all these awesome people. Bobby C. Bobby C. Congratulations, Bobby C. I need to get me some new pens for my desk. Thanks, Bobby. And again, Bobby, down below, winners, please email me at grazegiveaways at gmail.com. All right. This is the last draw, folks. This is the last draw. All right. Let's cross our fingers. All right. All right. Let's run it. All right, drum roll, please. John Jones, J O H N. John Jones, congratulations. You'll have a, and just so you know, you have a week. You got a week to email me at grazegiveaways at gmail.com to claim your prize. If not, next week I'll be giving them away again if no one claims their prize by next week. All right, folks, I truly appreciate everybody joining me on this uh, this live stream and this giveaway. Let me see if I can bring that back down. Let's get back to chat. Look at that. And look at this is how awesome our community is. Everybody's saying congratulations. You guys are super, super amazing. Everybody's so friendly and cordial. Uh, I, I truly love that. You know what I mean? I truly do. What's up, Annie Oakley? Good to see you. I just saw you pop in there. Minuteman 69 it says stove. You know, Minuteman, this this uh you know, you know, you know I'm gonna do a big giveaway this year. I always do right around Christmas time. Uh we're gonna have fun. I got some really cool things, Minuteman. Uh, and I'm gonna do a, a big one like I did last year. We might have to do a two-hour live stream to give all that stuff away. But this year, I'm slowly buying things that I think are really neat and cool for the community and adding them to a box because I want to have lots of different options to give you the viewers. Uh, and uh, when it gets closer to that time, I'll let you guys know when that pops up. All right, folks, uh, we're right at an hour. Uh, I wanna, I'm going to leave that. Uh, make sure you get that email. If not, you can always back up the stream, uh, replay the stream and get the email. It's grazegiveaways at gmail.com. But I want to go ahead and knock that out there. But all in all, look, folks, uh, again, 
Thank you all for being here and joining me uh, tonight on the live stream. Truly appreciate every single one of you folks out there. And again, be safe, folks, and know that you are not alone. Myself and the entire great community is here to help you anytime you have any questions or anything like that. All right, folks? Uh, mods, again, thank you so much for doing what you do. Bobby C says, uh, hold on. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Hold on. Hold on, folks. You can give mine away. Just enter for fun. Okay, Bobby C. Uh, we're going to. All right, folks. We got We got it. I can't end it yet. We got to redo it. We got to redo it. Uh-oh. We got to redo it. <laughs> I got to pull the StreamYard giveaway back up. Bobby wants to give his away. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. All right. Sorry about that, folks. If you're still here, <laughs> your uh, all your all your chats are going to still work. So don't worry. All right. I'm going to pull this back up. Sorry about that. But luckily, I guess we ever stay up. And I appreciate your honesty, Bobby. I really do. I appreciate that, Bobby. Thank you. I do appreciate that, my friend. All right. So let's do this one more time, folks. Whoops. I got. I guess I got to hit the right ones. <laughs> my apology. Whoops. I didn't want to do that. There's my giveaway tool. Everybody's probably leaving. and like, no, no, don't leave just yet. I'm going to let that culminate. <laughs> and again, Bobby, thank you so much uh, for being honest, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Little Stumpy Corner. I like that name. One Liberty, One Freedom. Good to see you. Jersey Girl, good to see you. Daryl Calhoun, good to see you. Janine W., good to see you. Beretta Vandy, good to see you. Let's Talk Prepping. Joe M., Mary Beth. Sherry Chapman. Texas T. All right. Just picking up on some names that I didn't get to get earlier and say hello to some of you awesome folks. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at there's another name I haven't seen before. Callie, Callie's my love. Kalia's my love. Oh, hopefully I got that right. What's up, Ann Palmer? Good to see you. Ice124, another great name. Muzzle Flash. Good to see you, brother. Didn't know you were hiding out. What's up, Pony Girl? Cindy Y, Mary Beth, Nature Girl. A lot of great people in here tonight. <laughs> All right, there's Mama Bear, online subscriber. <laughs> What's up, Jeff? Grow bag, give mine to JT. Roger that, Jeff, roger that. Deb Woods, let me see here. All right, just another minute or so because it is, we're running a little late tonight. A little late tonight. Jersey girl, good to see you. Saw you in there, Deb Woods. <laughs> I love that name, online subscriber. <laughs> Such great. What's up, Tiny Titan? Exiled West. Did I say what's up to you, Steve Spielman? I hope I did. Alien Prepper wrote silver. <laughs> right, Alien? Love silver. Love silver. All right. Texas T, truly appreciate that super chat, brother. You're super supportive, man. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much, man. That is very awesome of you. That is very awesome of you. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and draw it, man, because we're, we're out of time, folks. I'm going to go ahead and draw this. All right, let's see who our, our winner is tonight, our last winner. Potato Head. Potato Head is a winner. It's Miss Potato Head, by the way. So, Mrs. Potato Head, you have won something. That's very awesome. <laughs> it's probably funny hearing me scream out Potato Head on the live stream. Uh, and one real quick thing, uh, Potato Head, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this back up there so that you can see it. Uh, please email me at graysgiveaways at gmail.com. It's right there uh, on that. And uh, that's awesome. That is awesome that you won. That is awesome. Truly appreciate that. You can also thank Bobby C for being an honest individual. I appreciate that, Bobby. Again, where is my chat? There she is. <laughs> that's awesome, Potato Head. I just appreciate it. All right, Deacon, I saw you in there popping there. You guys have Angry Homesteader. Good to see you as well. God, ah, some people I missed. Don, Don Glossinger. Night, Cindy. Marilyn uh, Parmelay. 
All right, but we really do got to wrap this up. Let me get rid of this uh, email. Hopefully you got that potato head, but potato head, you know how to get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me in chat. Uh, and uh, if you're in my Discord, you can get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me through the email. One way or another, send me, tell me where you'd like to get that sent to. Please. Other than that, folks, again, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up really quick. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. I'll see everybody on the next live, which is at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Thursday night. I'll see you guys then. We'll talk about some things. Uh, who knows what we'll be talking about, but we'll be talking about the Florida meetup. Uh, other than that, have a blessed evening, everyone. Please be safe out there. And again, no, you're not alone. All right, this is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys on the rebound.